Hi, uh, today I, I will be talking about the content of phosphoric acid in Coca-Cola. So the aim of this whole experiment is to determine the concentration of the phosphoric acid in Coca-Cola. And this will be done over the course of three parts, uh, three different titrations. So in part one, we have two smaller titrations, and this is um, the part where we have a colorimetric titration. So the titration one is where we, um, where we add a couple of drops of the pH indicator methyl orange into 25 milliliters of, hydro um, of um, phos phosphoric acid. And this methyl orange uh, will go from the color red to pure yellow. And this will happen when it reaches uh, the, um, the pH of 3.2 to 4.4. So when this color change happens, then we know that the first endpoint has occurred. And in titration 2, we will add a couple of drops of the pH indicator phenylphthalein. Um, and this uh, can see on the... On the flask, that it goes from a clear um, and transparent, it goes from a clear and transparent solution to a pink solution, um, and this can also be seen here, um, where we have when when the pH uh, value of the solution goes to eight point two to ten, then the color change will occur. Yes, and here you can see a picture of the experimental setup. Here we have the conical flask with the red solution, which is, which is the methyl orange. Uh, we have a bread filled with sodium hydroxide, uh, which we're adding into the solution with phosphoric acid. Um, so when we had added uh, 7.1 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide, the solution turned pure yellow, as you can see in the picture here. And here we have a picture of the titration two where we have the clear color, uh, the clear solution, and here we have a picture where we have this fade uh, yellow, uh, fade uh, pink color. And this color was reached after we had added fourteen point six milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So in part two, we are doing a potentiometric titration, um, and this is done by we have this experimental setup. Um, it's it's the same experimental setup uh, throughout this um, experiment and all these titrations. Um, the difference in this one is that we have a pH meter. We have a beaker um, with 25 milliliters of phosphoric acid and then we have a barrette filled with um, 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And this pH meter is here to uh, measure the pH value throughout this titration to see when it, um, when it rises and what happens. And this pH meter is very important that it stays in the solution during the whole experiment. Yeah, and then during this experiment, we would then add the sodium hydroxide in portions of 0 0.5 milliliters. And then when the pH was starting to um, like change drastically, we would then um, add smaller portions. So we would um, see what, when, like, so it would be more clear when the endpoint was actually occurring. Yes, so out from this information and these numbers, we could make this graph. And from this graph, we can see that there is two endpoints, but there's actually also a third endpoint, but it's just not visible. Um, so for the first endpoint, which is here, um, we have read the pKa value to be 2.5, which must mean that this is a medium strong acid. Um, and this is a phosphoric acid. And in this reaction, it is reacting with the strong base um, hydroxide, creating um, the weak acid. Um, dihydrogen phosphate and water as well. So the dihydrogen phosphate um, has a red uh, value, um, pKa value um, from this um, to be 7.07, which is classified as a weak acid. Um, the table in a book tells us that it is 7.21, so it's not that far off. And for the third one, um, the third reaction, that is occurring up here. Um, it is not visible on this graph as there is not the, mo the, the biggest change in uh, pH as there is here. Here the pH is jumping drastically and it's also occurring here. But here it's going from a weak acid to a weak base reacting with a strong base. So the pH is not jumping suddenly. Um, but we know that th this reaction is occurring as well until there is no more um, acid left. 
And yes, so out from this information, we would also like to calculate the pH to see how that um, adds up to how we measured it. So the volume added of the sodium hydroxide was um, 6.4 milliliters at the first endpoint, and the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.1 molar. So first off, we want to calculate the amount of substance of sodium hydroxide, which we do by, by multiplying um, the concentration times the volume. So as that this can be seen here, and we get 0.64 millimoles. And this amount of substance of the sodium hydroxide is the same, um, is equivalent to the amount of substance of the acid, of the phosphoric acid. Um, therefore, we will calculate the concentration of the phosphoric acid by, by saying um, the amount of substance divided by the volume. So we are saying 0.64 millimoles divided by 25 milliliters, which, was, which gave us 0.0256 molar. And we can now use this information to calculate the pH. And we're calculating the pH by this formula is one by one over half um, times the pKl value minus the logarithm to the concentration. And this can be seen here, and we got the pH 4.45. Again, we did this at the other endpoint as well. Uh, the volume added was 14.5 milliliters, and now we use another pKl value. We use the pKb value, 6.79. Um, which was used down here, but this is the same, and we got the concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate. And then here we had the pH, to calculate the pH, we used this formula, and then we got the pOH, and to get the pOH, we would say, that if we would get the pH out of the pOH, we would say that we would have to um, say 14 and then subtract um, the P pOH, and then we got a pH value of 9.71. And here we can see a comparison of the both red and the calculated values. And the both of the values are actually fairly close compared to the calculations. Um, this one is a bit further off, but otherwise they look um, pr pretty similar. So to compare part two with part one, um, we can see that we got um, that the endpoint in part two was around the pH 4.4, and from part one we learned that the endpoint would actually be around 4.4. So this way we can see that it has a correlation. And for the second endpoint, um, we can also see that um, it occurred around uh, it 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 was at nine in um, in part two, and then we saw a color change around. 8.2 till 10 um, in part one. So therefore, there's also correlations between those two. So in part three, we did a potentiometric titration of Coca-Cola. But before we did uh, the titration, we first degassed the Coca-Cola. We took 160 milliliters of cola um, and added it to this tube here. And then we had a water jet pump that would have air bubbling through it until there's no more bubbles left in, solution, in the solution. And the point of this is to get all of the CO2 out of the solution. Um, and this is because CO2 um, will be, would be reacting with the OH minus, um, OH minus um, ions and will be creating an acid. And um, then if there was, then there would have to be used more of the sodium hydroxide while doing the titration, and we would only we would don't we wouldn't um, get the concentration or the content of the phosphoric acid, but we would get the concentration and the content of the phosphoric acid and the CO two. So therefore, we removed the CO two, so we would only get it of the phosphoric acid. Another thing to add as well is that um, the reason to why we did a potentiometric um, titration is because we couldn't do the colorimetric titration as part one and this is because the um, coca-cola is just too dark to see any kind of color change we wouldn't see turn from clear to pink or anything like that. so the experimental procedure was exactly the same as in part two and from the graphical analysis we got this graph and here we have the graph um, of the ph titration of the phosphoric acid as um as comparison and from this 
pH titration of Coca-Cola, we can see that they actually look pretty much similar alike. Um, here we have the first endpoint, here we have the second endpoint, and then there should also be a third endpoint right here. Um, often just looking at this graph, we can actually conclude or say that there is phosphoric acid in Coca-Cola as they were very similar, as I said just before. So, to calculate the concentration of the phosphoric acid in the Coca-Cola, we would do this. Um, we added 7.25 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide into the Coca-Cola before the first endpoint occurred. So first off, again, we want to calculate this amount of substance of the sodium hydroxide, which is done here. And again, as the other um, experiments, um, the the, so, uh, the amount of substance of the sodium hydroxide is the same or is equivalent to the um, amount of substance of the, uh, of the phosphoric acid. So to calculate this, again, we did this. And the result we got was 0 0.0048 molar. And from this, we can conclude that the content of phosphoric acid in Coca-Cola and the concentration of it is 0 0.00 for 8 molar. So yeah, there is phosphoric acid in cola and that's about it for what I have to say. Thank you for listening.